Hillsboro on the bridge, this is Encore. Outbound for your 730. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the Fish Blue Water Channel. Uh, got my son coming in town for a little spring break uh, from Gainesville, University of Florida next week. So uh, I'm gonna try to run down south here this morning and see if we can catch some, some small baits, some thread fins, Maybe some pilchards, if time permits, might look around for some sardines, but we're headed south and we're taking you for the ride. Let's go. Still at it. I've been on the mic much because I've been struggling, man. Started this morning uh, down on the the bait patches. It was so spotty. Just north of Government Cut. It wasn't even really worth turning the camera on. Inside here in the cut this afternoon on the outgoing tide. Some threadfin herring. Uh, right here on the point, um, basically between the basin for the freighters and um, the stretch where the, uh, the cruise ships are, <clears throat> but still not easy. So I'm gonna dip back in here, uh, the turning basin. There weren't, weren't any pilchards in here this morning, but I wanna see now that the tides changed. Maybe if they've gotten moved in here off the flat or not. Um, just taking a break from the thread fin stuff because it's brutally slow and boring right now. So let's see what happens. You guys been catching any pilchards in here? Yeah.
Holy crap, guys. That was a long day. Some bait sessions are easier than others. This was not an easy one. Basically, I've been on the water almost 12 hours. But when you make a run 40 miles, you might as well stick it out even if it's not happening. And uh, definitely uh, had to work for it today. Extra hand, could have probably easily doubled what we had. Um, they weren't easy to catch, but anyhow, ended up with probably like 10 dozen herring. Shout out to the Triple J team. They hooked me up with some stand-in shades or I would have been hurting today, but uh, the sun is dropping. I got a 40 mile ride, I'm gonna take it back to the barn. And when we get to the dock, we'll, we'll see how many of these things we ended up with. Got the bait well flooded out so that there's not a lot of sloshing. Got to be careful with those herring when you're running. They're a really delicate bait. But uh, fall motion should be a good ride, and hopefully we'll have safe travels back here to Home Fort Hillsboro Inlet. All right, guys, so if you watch the video all the way through, here's a little added bonus for you. Just wanted to show you um, the rigs and the tackle that I used for that bait fishing session today um, picked all this stuff up at uh, Bass Pro Shops before uh, we made the trip the next day um, got two different sets of uh, bait rigs these are the fluorocarbon uh, cigar uh, bait rigs this is a number four I don't know if you can see that and this is a number six um, fluorocarbon rigs got ourselves a couple of uh, de hookers and these are actually um, R and R Ray Rocher, uh, his rigs. Um, didn't have any. They didn't have any in size six when I was there. But you see here, this head is a mix of red and green dots, um, and this is all green dots. Um, also, four carbon rigs. Three different size leads that I picked up. Uh, um, just not knowing which size was going to be working best for us, and. Um, basically one, two, and three ounce sizes. This guy right here, uh, the one ounce size, seemed to work the best. The baits were a little bit finicky, so um, just had more success with a uh, lighter weight and a more natural presentation. Didn't really, I think both the R&R &R and Ayabusa rigs were equally effective, so we'll have all uh, the links to the rigs and the, the tackle in the uh, description below. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and we'll see you for the next Fish Blue Water Adventure.